She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Detail Therapy. My name is Kylie and I am the social media manager here at Gatlew House. Today we wanted to share an amazing conversation Amy had with Chris Ducker, who you might remember from season two of Detail Therapy. In this episode, they get into the details about morning routines and growing your YouTube channel. Let's dive right in. Hello there, my fellow youpreneurs, and welcome back to another monthly chit chat. We are here in the crack cave. I've just made that up. Literally, I've just made that up. I'm here with my very good friend, Amy Landino, here at the home office in Cambridge, England. Governor joins us today. So sweet. He is. He's a sweetie pie. He really is. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot. Amy is the author of these two amazing books. Blog Like a Boss came first. What year? Right, 2017. 2017. Good morning, good life. The end of 2019. 2019. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about all that good stuff. Um, but first, I just want to say thank you for being here. I am so excited to be here. I feel like I'm part of this elite club of people that have been in this office. There's not, awesome. there's not many. No, there's I know. Not many. I'm a very private guy, as you know. So um, Amy was in town. We don't know when this will actually go live. Yeah, but yeah. Amy was in town here for our I'm not first... in town anymore, if you're wondering. <laughs> yeah, you've gone. You've gone already I'm now gone. after this. She was in town for our first Youpreneur Incubator, where she was our very special uh, kind of surprise coach for everybody. Um, did a great session on morning routines, which we will go into. Uh, and then you spent some time with our elite members, really dived very deep mm -hmm. on YouTube so and video fun. marketing and stuff like that. It's it was good, good stuff. Um, so now we get the opportunity to have a all to ourselves for a bit of a chat. The first question I have for you is in relation to YouTube. Mm -hmm. 370,000 mm -hmm. plus something subs, like that. something like yeah. that. Been doing it a long time. 2020, are we too late no. to take this seriously? No, 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 no. Obviously, YouTube's not going anywhere, but even if it were, I think it's an incredible skill set to be able to have a conversation with an online audience in video form. Mm. It converts to a lot of things. Um, but not only that, from a uh, congested standpoint, we have to change our expectation a little bit. If you're super niche and you know who you're talking to and you really know what the value is that you can deliver, it's absolutely never too late. If you're trying to become the biggest YouTuber of all time, not a good enough goal you're probably too late right. on that. But that's not really what moves the needle for our business. If we're looking at what our goals are and what we're trying to reverse engineer, that wouldn't be the goal anyway. Uh, we're trying to look at how do we convert customers to what we can do for them and finding just those people that are perfect for that business. That is not hard. That's a little SEO play on yeah. YouTube. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand that YouTube is still the second largest search engine mm -hmm. on the planet and is owned by the, number the one. first yes, search engine. That's and right. Governor's now falling and in Governor love with loves Amy. Me. <laughs> Not only that, you know what I learned, Vin, is this right? My husband's off, off camera. Yes. Uh, the number two podcasting source is YouTube. I'm not surprised by that. Because podcasts are, are now going there and creating channels. For people, because you can listen to YouTube in your pocket as well. It'll play you in can. your earbuds. So um, it's really great from a from any content standpoint. As long as you're very focused on what you deliver and you promise what you say you're going to, it can be a great place for you. So here's a follow up question to you then. Somebody like me and probably a lot of the youpreneurs tuning in have been on YouTube for a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've not taken it as seriously as they should have up sure. to this point. Yeah. Like myself, it's easy to get distracted. Um, and well, I mean, we're, we are we're fundamentally we're building businesses. Yeah. Obviously, we're not trying to be professional. Right. YouTubers, but right. we appreciate the platform and what it can bring to us. How can we kind of, what are, what, are, what are some of the things that we can do to really kickstart our channel and kind of breathe new life, life into it and that sort of type of thing? Sometimes the simplest things are the biggest things and uh, being consistent mm -hmm. is huge. When you are consistently uploading, it doesn't have to be the same day a week, but it could be easier from a business and time management standpoint to do that. If you upload one video per week, if you just stick with that, 
do it every single week, never miss an episode, as if that's a person waiting to have a coffee appointment with you, right. just like any other appointment you would have. If you show up consistently, you're training the audience and you're also training the YouTube algorithm that you show up, you deliver, and you're showing what type of value that you present. To be honest, that is a big one because it is very easy to get distracted and say, mm -hmm. oh, well, this YouTube thing's not working after two months, three months. It's right. so hard. So we're going to take a break. We're going to come back to it. And every time you do that, you're telling the audience that you're not being consistent and YouTube's just getting this blank time of not understanding what you're really doing. Yeah, because the YouTube algorithm is incredible. Oh, yeah. Like it's very intuitive. Oh, yes. It knows what's going on. Yes. I mean you may have said this in um, actually in the incubator, it's incredible the percentage of viewers you will have that are not subscribed. Yes. And it's very easy for those well-intentioned viewers to not subscribe because the algorithm is so good at serving them up the content anyway. Right. If they know that they've been watching a lot of Chris Ducker lately, right. those videos are going to show up on the homepage they don't need either it. way. Yeah. But if they start researching you know, how to fix a car, lots of car fixing <laughs> videos are going to show up too. Right. So you do want the subscribe, but it's not necessarily the biggest indicator of success. If you are simply tapping into what they want to know more about, you will show up for them every time. YouTube just needs to understand what you do well so it can compartmentalize right. what you do and where to send it to people. I remember when we moved into this house, I logged into YouTube on the TV using my account. Mm -hmm. And a week later, everything that was being suggested by YouTube is nothing but Minecraft videos. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big Minecraft fan, no. truth be told, but my 10-year-old boy is. Oh, I can tell. Right? It's funny. I'll even say something to my editor like, you've been watching YouTube in my account again. <laughs> I know you've been doing it on accident, but you've got to be careful because I really take my viewer experience on YouTube right. just as seriously as my creator experience. Right. But yes, the 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 all the whole algorithm will change based on what you care about, which is great news for anyone creating because, again, the subscriber number doesn't mean everything. Right. And, uh, and, and, and your one video could totally make a channel. Right. Absolutely. Okay. So here's the thing. I, I, I think that the large majority of the people watching this right now or listening to it, if they downloaded the audio version, they are, if they're being coached well, they are more interested in playing the long game with this thing, the evergreen game, rather than trying to get that little, mm -hmm. you know, virality every now and then, right? So that, I mean, really that, plays into SEO, or search engine optimization, which is just as important as apparent on YouTube as it is when we're creating blogs for Google searches and things like that. Mm -hmm. What do we need to do? Let's talk a little kind of tactics here a little bit on SEO. What, what do we need to do specifically with the keywords on our video and what we want to be found for? And more importantly, what do we need to do to find out what those keywords are yeah. in the first place? Yeah. So the finding out is a whole different process. The, the actual using of is a lot simpler. So it, for me, um, something that my channel is very well known for is morning routines. So mm -hmm. let's say that's a, that's a keyword that I'm continuing to tap into with yet another upload. I want that phrase to be in the title and the description and the tags. Those are the three major areas of copy on each individual video. And every video on YouTube is just like any other web page that Google is um, ranking or caching Indexing or any or of those whatever, things, right. anything. So when you think about what is the title of a page, you would want your keyword in that title of a page just like you would with a YouTube video. Right. So you want that phrase uh, as early on in the title as possible just to, so the viewer really has the easiest time figuring sure. out what the video is about, but also so that Google and YouTube can um, rank things in search. Mm -hmm. And then in the description, pretty much the entire description of a YouTube video is ranked equally in YouTube search. But where Google comes into play, you're probably familiar with a meta description for a blog post or yep. a web page. The first couple of lines of a description Key. on a video, that's where you really want to make sure that your keywords are showing up because that's where right. Google is going to pay the closest attention to it. And then, of course, you're going to want to put that in your uh, that keyword into your tags. And then any similar keywords to it or different ways of phrasing the question or phrasing the video that you've posted, um, just in case it's not being searched for exactly. Exactly the way you typed it right. up. But yeah, so th and that's what that is. You never, ever, ever want to put tags in a description. That's against terms of service. YouTube can shut you down for that. There's a tag section for tags. There's a description section for descriptions. Okay. But yeah, you, you focus those three areas, the only three areas. Now, what, good. A, what about 
in the video itself the video because obviously itself. YouTube is creating their own subtitles now mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. people want them to. Yes. I, I mean, I recommend that people do their own captions as much as possible. Sure. Rev.com is a dollar a minute. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know if it's, it's a great, pound uh, a minute. For, it's for, phenomenal service. Yeah, yeah, totally, it's, yeah. It's, it's worth it. It's just so simple and easy. And if you integrate it into your channel, it will automatically put that caption file exactly where it goes. There's no additional steps needed for you. So yeah. that's fantastic. And that helps a lot. That's really more viewer experience. YouTube can figure out what a video is about, even if they don't get the subtitles or captions quite right. Um, you're helping them a lot with the copy we just talked about, the headline description and tags, but um, the caption will definitely kind of reinforce some of those things. I wouldn't say that the caption is the sole amount of information or copy that Google or YouTube needs to figure out what your video is about. They still right. want you to use those other areas for it to understand the best. It's come back to me you know, now. We're taking turns. <laughs> it's okay. He's playing a game of tennis with He'll us. That's what he's doing. He'll be back. <laughs> All right, let's talk thumbnails. Yes. Important. Yes. More important than thumbnails ever. Thumbnails are very important. Um, if, so from uh, thumb, if you don't know what a thumbnail is, it's the photo that people see when they are deciding to watch a video. So if you think about it, unlike many other social networks, they're identifying with an image to decide to watch a video. Right. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, we're seeing the video play pretty instantly when we're deciding whether we want to watch it or not. Yes. So that image is extremely important and we're very fortunate in the last number, uh, a few years or so, YouTube has added an additional sort of metric for us on the uh, analytics side for us to measure success, and one of those is your click-through rate. So mm. similar that you might measure your click-through rate on an ad or on a web page or whatever, um, your thumbnail image that you upload to help people understand what your video is about is something you can measure the success of. A lot of people don't realize we spend a lot of time on the lights and the cameras and the angles and the things, but if no one ever got into the video because the headline was all right and the image really didn't help us get feel feel like we need to be pulled in mm -hmm. who cares how the video went mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it, it could have been the best thing you ever shot but no one's going to see it so really knowing you need to capture just a single frame of something that's going to help articulate visually what this video is why it's worth watching is very important this drives my team nuts yeah. because i'm quite an animated guy on yeah, video yeah. on stage and all the rest of it and so they're always trying their best to remind me just do a couple of poses at still, the beginning Chris. of the just just <laughs> Just one, just look one minute. It's yeah. Minute. One second. Yeah. Um, That's what I, th when I start filming, I look at the camera and I'm okay, I got, so all, my, got all my stuff, got all my stuff, we hit right. record and I just kind of. Perfect. Oh God. Pose fest. Pose fest I is need what a... we call it. And that way our <laughs> editing team can go snap, snap, Oh, snap. so, such and a good idea. And we've got a few options to choose from. You really, these days, you got to get even more creative than that, I think. But at minimum, if you were doing right. nothing else, you can take that image and sort of leave some space on the side, add a little bit more copy on the image, which doesn't help you from an actual SEO perspective, but it does help humans right. to yes. see like, oh, Visually, oh, this could right. be interesting. There, there might be another couple of words you could say that would make somebody want to watch the video more because you added copy to the photo. That's what I recommend. I mean, you're talking about the, the ad for the video, essentially. Mm -hmm. What are you going to, you know, you don't want to wait for that moment where you're kind of smiling in the middle of a word in the video to kind of, oh, try to grab yes. that. And you definitely don't want YouTube to choose, you know, it like gives randomly. you three options. Right, it's right, like right. they're never that good. Um, so you really have to get creative there and, and add a little branding so that people know it's you every time. And uh, it's very important. Okay, so we shot the video. We've edited the video, mm -hmm. we've uploaded the video, mm -hmm. the thumbnails are rocking uh, yes. because we had our pose fest. That's right. Got how can headline. we make sure, yeah, how can we make sure, yeah, we've done all that stuff. Yeah. How can we make sure that people see this thing? And there is that 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 period, right? I think you even talk about it in the book. Yeah. Um, Blog like a boss. That's right. They can get it all good online bookstores yeah. and <laughs> elsewhere. All the good ones. Um, you talk about this kind of, it's kind of like a 24 hour, 48 hour mm -hmm. sort of type of period mm -hmm. where this is where YouTube is really looking at what's yes. going on, right? Yes. Talk about that. It's roughly about 48 hours and it gets, it's really not a firm rule, but I would say you, you don't want to go overboard uploading a bunch of videos in a row or not giving one particular video time to grow. And so it really is about that 48 hour period. 
And your goal during that time is to get as much traffic to the YouTube link, not to your blog post where you've embedded the video, right. where YouTube makes money, they want you to send people. If you can prove you bring people, they might send some more people as well. Right. And so it's really trying to get as much traction in that first couple of days as possible so that there's actually something to measure. How well did the thumbnail do? How well um, is the audience retention of the video? What percentage basically of the video did people stay to? tuned for um, and did they subscribe? Did they watch another video? Did you start a session and continue it? If your video brought somebody to the platform, they watched it and they stuck around for another one, whether it's yours or not, that's powerful because it means that you keep people sure. on the platform. And they want, they want they that. They want that. They yeah. want to make their money. They want to have people stay on as long as possible, just like we would want someone to go to our blog post on our website and see another one and another one and keep that length of time on the website going. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to that. So they're looking for all of that. The best thing that you can do for a video is to get as many people to tune into it as you have the power to. So finding different ways to tweet it, finding different ways to upload a, an Instagram story to promote it. Um, sending it to your email list is a smart move if you have that database because it's a focused group of people yep. who've already said, I trust you, send me good stuff. Great, here's some good stuff. Here's a video, right. here's what it's about. Go and check it out. So what does that look like then, without getting maybe too in depth, mm -hmm. but as a snapshot, a video is due to go live on Amy TV. Mm -hmm. What does Team Amy TV do when that video goes live? What is kind of like the four or five things that they do to make sure that as many people see that video as possible? The very first thing that we do is before the video comes out, and that's go to my Patreon group, which is called Shine Squad. There's a level of people in Shine Squad that get an early notice that the video is coming. Ah, These okay. are the only people that get to see what video is coming at what time and what it's about. Cool. So they get that early notice, so they're anticipating it, which is cool. They get that early access as kind of a, a, a fun And moment. these are like the, the, the top fans. Oh, right? yeah. Like, so they're oh, going to yeah. comment. Just they're going to lie. Yeah. Go, oh, a few hundred okay. people who are like, oh my gosh, how did you know I needed this? I can't wait to tune in. And then you really have those people who are going to show up early on. Love that yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's almost great. like an extended marketing team, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. these, you're, you're saying, these people are so excited about what you're doing. They're paying to be a part of this membership, and they're saying, put us to work. We are your task force. We're so excited to let everyone know how to go after the life that they, you know, we want to tell our friends about this. So yeah. that's, that's the very, very first thing is that 24-hour notice that a video is coming. Um, once the video goes out, it's very, I am super traditional. It's like I press publish on the video at the same moment that I press the tweet that goes out. The tweet goes out, it says the name of the video, it's, it has the YouTube link directly to the video, and the thumbnail image is uploaded to the tweet. So people know on Twitter, when they see that, there's a new video out right, and they click right. right into it. We also and, you know, do... And we should say you, you go twice a week, right? That's Two new right, videos Wednesdays a week? and Thursdays at okay. 4 p.m. Eastern. So that's when that goes out. Um, and then uh, my editor has also created a quick 10 to 15 second Instagram story video that helps me to promote. So I am fortunate enough to have the swipe up feature on my Instagram. Yep. So I can upload this short little vertical video. I include the link to the video in the swipe up there and then people can kind of see that on my Instagram. Staying on Instagram, do you also post to your profile grid or only stories? Um, no, the only time I will post to the grid, here's how I look at Instagram. Um, Instagram posts are sort of my micro blog posts. So I will spend a lot more time in a description or a caption of an mm -hmm, Instagram mm -hmm. post and put a complimentary photo with it. So there, I spend more time on that as a blog post. My stories are kind of like all my fun commercials. Here's here's a little video to go watch my other video. Here's a couple graphics of some things I was featured right. in. It's more actionable, like go check this out, go check this out, go yep. check this out. When someone's swiping through the feed for a traditional post, I don't do as much go check out the link in my bio. I do more. I want to offer you value so that you actually want to stay tuned for my Instagram. Okay, how do you feel about though? Because we do this from time to time. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about putting stuff up on the grid, mm -hmm. on the profile, mm -hmm. promoting it, mm -hmm. and then deleting it after the fact. 
to clean oh, up yeah. the grid. Oh, yeah. If there's something that needs to go out and it's like this is super temporary, I would, right. I, and I'll archive something that doesn't Maybe there's a launch around. or there's yeah. something you want to promote yeah, or something I, like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, if I'm being honest, my stories are so effective. I'm just going to spend my time there. Mine are way more effective as well because you can see the numbers. I can mm -hmm. see hundreds and hundreds of people looking at stories. I can see stories. the impact. It's yeah. real. And the DM action that happens oh, yes. instantly. I mean, yeah. you can just tell the impact of stories is so powerful. It is. It, it'll send people to a YouTube video or it'll get them to take a poll or they'll send me a DM and say, oh my gosh, Lucy looks so cute today. You get the whole effect there where I just feel like I, I the, the grid isn't the same. It's not quite the same. I agree. And definitely context. I have seen, to your point, I've seen that when I go deeper on the captions, mm -hmm. almost like a small blog mm -hmm. post with a photo that kind of complements that, it. way more engagement. Absolutely. Way more Absolutely. engagement. Absolutely. People yeah. want to comment. This is why I'm not afraid of, um, now that we're going on this Instagram tangent, I'm not we afraid kind of, of yeah, I'm not afraid <laughs> of Instagram getting rid of likes. Like I actually am right. oh, very get, impressed no. by the amount of likes I think I get for the account level that I'm at. But that's not where the magic happens. The magic is happening in the comments. And if yeah. you're not working really hard to make those comments happen, your account's not any going to be any good anyway. It's too easy to gamify the like situation. I so, agree. I don't yeah. even look at the likes. I'm right. looking at the comments. Right. That's right. What, what are people saying? Is it valuable? Is it is it thriving? Okay. Let's go back to YouTube real quick. Mm -hmm. We're diving deep here. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. Playlists. How uh -huh. important? Uh, playlists are very important for, for the same reason we talked about earlier with keeping people on the site. So being able to say, if you enjoyed this, not only can you watch more videos like this, I have a specific playlist that plays to this exact topic. That's uh, it, Playlists are great for that reason. And also, a lot of people don't realize playlists themselves have their own SEO value mm -hmm. where a YouTube video also does. So um, ranking a playlist for YouTube is important to them because it's not just getting somebody to watch one video, it's getting them to watch many. And you would do that in the same manner as you do a single video with the title? Yes, I don't think it doesn't have, I don't think it has tags. No, it doesn't, I, does it's it? just It's just yeah. title and description. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a lot shorter, but still there. And clearly, if in your individual videos, for mm -hmm. example, you are pushing people to a specific playlist mm -hmm. and people are watching all those videos in the playlist, YouTube's going to say, oh, this playlist is hot. Yes. And that's going to naturally yes. get ranked and listed. Yes. And, and the like channel's that. hot. Right. I mean, especially for that person, clearly it's playing to their happiness level. And all of these social networks are just trying to make us happy. It's just trying to say, okay, great. I know this person likes baking so much. So we just need to push anything baking in front of them. Not only that, they seem to be gravitating toward this one individual channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to push as many of the baking videos from that channel as possible. They're paying attention to individual behavior more than anything. I saw, I mean, like up until maybe about a year ago, I used to see like one big tactic, although it looked like, it certainly looked like, and I think it was a genuine strategy, collaborations between one YouTuber to another where, you know, in one day, you would shoot one video with me mm -hmm. for your channel mm -hmm. and I would do likewise. Mm -hmm. I don't see that as yeah. much nowadays. Is Has that as a tactic died? Yes. I think with many things, the easy way to grow eventually becomes the overdone thing that doesn't work anymore. Of course. Right. And also, same reason why youpreneur is a powerful thing. People believe in the individual that they, that they grow trust with. So they really just want to hear from that person when right. they want to hear from that person. Um, it it was heavily done, especially at the beginning of YouTube. The first YouTubers, YouTubers really realized, oh, wow, this is so crazy. When we get together, we double up our following right. because we, we are able to get that crossover. The audience is much smarter than that now. They're much more particular about who they see. It's not just and what they instant. Watch. Exactly. Right. It's not an instant um, vote of confidence. It's okay. Well, that's cool that you're friends with so-and-so. I might pay attention to what they're doing, but I'm not jumping on board with them right away. Yeah, because I mean, it's like they, they might love Amy's style, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then Amy might team up with somebody else who also talks about a similar topic, right. but they don't like that person's style. Right, exactly. So they're not going to stick around, There's a whole really. reason why you decide on who your influencer is. Right. And sometimes there's more than one of them, but a lot of times you really get you have that one person in that particular area. It's sort of like your personal board of directors, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to that person for like. Luxury. I'm going to go to that person for business. I'm going to go to that person for what you name it. Um, so I, I think that's the reason why. Um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't work. But as a creator, you have to be much more careful about how you do it because there's a cadence that you're building. If you've done a really good job of building a YouTube channel, there's a way of, of, of how you do things. And for me, it's 
I want you to feel like you're sitting in the office with me and we're having a coffee and we're chatting and I'm talking to you like you're my best friend. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to talk exactly the same way if there's now a third party in the room. Sure. It's more you're on you're a fly on the wall. The way that we talk is going to be slightly different. So because of that, it's a distraction. It doesn't feel the same. And an audience member is going to go, oh, okay, well, this isn't the normal thing, so I'll be back. Right. Or they'll say like, wow, I really, I, I can't believe she knows that person. I might watch. But it's much more variable than my job of just needing you to watch every single video. And this because is, that's how I prove to the algorithm that I bring you to the platform. Exactly. And this is where like the whole focus of become somebody's favorite right. is so powerful. Right. right? Yeah. Stop leaning on other people because yeah. the reality is your job, it, although the hardest, is to build the relationship directly. You do you look listen like, to this, you everyone. look like a connector. It's great. Like, <laughs> like, like, oh, cool. Chris and Amy like know each other. They're connectors. They've got, you know, they've built a rapport. That's great. It's always good to be a connector. But if you can't have the relationship one on one, mm -hmm. the presence as a whole is totally yeah, worthless. Forget about it. Let's switch gears for a minute. And and I want to talk, I want to dive a little bit into the new book, Good Morning, Good Life, which I was very blessed to be able to write the foreword for. Yeah. Thank you for the invite on that. Um, you guys got to check it out. It's great. My my kind of thing on here is like, you know, you're building this business. You've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. now. Clearly, time management, productivity mm -hmm. has been a topic that you've filmed a lot on. Yeah. And we'll link to Amy's channel, obviously, you know, below the video and you can check it out. But how has very specifically the morning routine played into you, not only just growing the YouTube channel, but also the business? Because yes. there's a lot more. Speaker at VaynerMedia mm -hmm. Agency mm -hmm. with Gary Vaynerchuk and his team, um, obviously best-selling author, lots of other stuff that you do. Big companies are now lining up to work with you from a sponsorship angle. That doesn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. And clearly, you've got to be a little bit regimented about the way that you build things up over a period of time. How has the morning routine played such an important role for you? I'm sure this is relatable for people, but it, the morning routine played a role instantly when you know what I was doing was just a side hustle. Mm. You know, there's only so many hours in the day, and if I wanted to make some of them more my own and me have complete control over them, I needed to have a morning routine. If I have to work from nine to five, and the only time I had to work on my side hustle or my business or my YouTube channel or anything was evenings and weekends evenings I'm tired I worked right. a whole day you know yeah. I just kind of want to relax I want to be able to read a book um, waking up in the morning and being able to say like okay I'm going to start the day on my terms and I'm going to focus on the thing that moves the needle for me is huge so I've just always found that there's three critical things you need in the morning it's a little bit of movement some mindfulness not picking up the phone and trying to figure out what everybody else thinks yep but figure out what I think and then the mastery and the mastery was the time where I was building the channel and finally really building an idea that could have been a business to leave my full-time job that continued on for the last 10 years there's five sections of the book decide defy rise shine and thrive yeah. let's break them down very quickly Great. we don't want to give too much no, no. Buy the book. I know. Buy that book, you guys. Buy the book. <laughs> Break them down for us. Okay, these are just the five habits. You master your morning and your life when you do this. Decide. I think you will agree that making a decision is very important, yes. especially when you go into business. You have to be very good at making decisions. Not just that, not dwelling on the fact that you could have done something else. Moving forward, learning, continuing to go forward. Deciding why you're going to do this. Why do you need a morning routine? Why are you going to wake up before you used to? Why are you going to change your procedures every day? Is it, It's got to matter in a, yep. in a very important way for you to actually change the way you do things. So decide. Defy. Anticipate the obstacles and defy them. If you know you have children who just seem to wake up earlier every time you try to wake up a little bit earlier, how can you work with them on that? You know, if you're a good human amazing problem. You get to be on earth with other good humans. Congratulations. So they're not necessarily in the way. They're just a part of your life. Right. Um, other obstacles include scrolling on the phone or um, not having good habits with your alarm clock and hitting the snooze too much. Anticipate the obstacles and defy them. Right. Um, rise is the next one. Rise is in, uh, rise of the youpreneur too. I just remember that. So rise, I don't have to tell an adult how to get out of bed. I mean, it still continues to be hard as much as we love the warmth of our bed. But most of the time, the issue with just I gotta getting be honest, up. If you weren't here, 
in my house right now. I so would have slept in this morning. I know. I was like, this is totally sleeping vibes. I'm like, and but, it's is it a it's a Wednesday? But here, like, I'm like, we're all like, <laughs> can we just sleep in today? It's kind of like. But we're here, like, she was like, oh god, Amy Lindino's in my house. She gets up early in the morning, <laughs> which means I have to to make a coffee and croissant. I know, it's so good. But, but but guess what? The only reason why we were able to do it is hopefully we got enough sleep. The majority of people, and I think it's 50% of CEOs, are not getting enough sleep yes. at night. We can't an anticipate our obstacles and do a good job of making decisions if we are under cared for. So getting at least seven hours of sleep is important. I don't care if you wake up at 5 a.m. I care that you got the sleep right. so that you can start the day on yes. your terms. Yes. So that's a really big part of the rise situation. Shine is what is that morning routine? It doesn't have to be what somebody talked about on YouTube. It doesn't have to be what um, what's a big entrepreneur. Tony Robbins, um, anybody. It doesn't have to be somebody else's routine. It just has to be yours. So what are, and, and again, the movement, the mindfulness, and the mastery. If you do those three things, I think you could have a 15 minute routine and be crushing the morning for yourself. Rock it out, yeah. But we don't stop at the morning. We have to live the rest of the day and we have to continue to go after the lives that we want. And so that's what Thrive is all about. What are you doing the rest of the day? How are you connecting with people? How are you creating content? How are you batching your calendar? All of these things that continue to make the rest of your life more efficient and getting to bed on time so you can do it all again the next day. I believe starting the day on your terms is a way of preparing for the rest of the world when they come into play and, and bring those obstacles to you, especially as a business owner. God, it's so good, isn't she good? I love all this stuff. Like, we could keep going yes. for like another hour, easy. <laughs> um, I got a closing question for you though. Okay. Um, obviously you've been, how long, when did you start on YouTube? When was mm -hmm. kind of like your beginning? My, year? my top secret channel that no one's ever seen is from 2008. Is it still up there? Yes. Like, just for me. Is it only just for you? Like just all the me. videos I'm listed and stuff? Or? Yes, because they were really just like, <laughs> ooh, I figured you, out how to make a video. And, I, and when they're we're very done, silly. will you show me I'll, one video? Maybe, I'll think about it. i got to think of one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so 2008, you decided, I'm going to do this. Yes. Or I'm going to put a video in front of me, blah, blah, blah. Here we are now, 2020, 12 years. It's a long time. And you build a very successful business and you're continuing to kind of really just grow as an entrepreneur in general. You're not resting on your laurels at all. Mm -hmm. If there was one thing that you could have said to Amy 12 years ago before she hit record button for the first time, knowing what you know now, what would that one thing be? Uh, I, I really always give the same answer to this because I'm poor at it. And I think a lot of people are. It's just asking for help. Just always asking for help a little bit more easily. I think um, I'm sort of the opposite of people. I have very low expectations. I don't expect anybody to do anything for me. Mm -hmm. And so I think I take on a lot more than I need to. I just offloaded my video editing for the first time ever in the last six months. I've called you the queen of the jump cuts yes. for years. <laughs> and now you've ruined it because you're yeah, not jump know, cutting I know, anymore. I know, but I have somebody that knows how to do it. So it's sort of like, <laughs> well, that was special, but now yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's really cool because I, I, the creative juices that I need to continue to keep flowing, they yep. can't do that if you're always on the hamster wheel. So that's always been the hardest thing for me is asking for help, allowing the process to take what it takes to train somebody and get them to help you at the level that you want to be at. Um, I, I would just say, you know, keep doing what you're doing because you are, you're not asking for any shortcuts. You're not trying to you know, be a sloppy networker. You're doing what you should be doing, but yes. maybe earlier on, you can find ways to budget and move your time around even more so that you can get the help you need so you can make the bigger moves that only I can make. And I think that's what I needed to hear. I love that. Wisdom, mm. value, value bombs in the house. <laughs> Vlog like a boss. Good morning, good life. Go check them out. Thank you so much for being with me, Governor. Of so course. Let's moving back to you now. Yeah. You're such oh, a are we bloody, done? You're are such a done? bloody traitor. You're <laughs> such a traitor. We'll be back at you again next month for another chit chat, which will be equally as fantastic as this one. And uh, thank you very much, darling. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Bye for now. If podcasts are your favorite, Join Amy for two minutes of morning motivation with an exclusive daily podcast from Shine Squad. If you're ready to get motivated and to start every day on your terms, sign up at amytvshinesquad.com. And that is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and we appreciate it as always. Remember, 
subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. We'll see you back here on Tuesday. Cheers. <laughs>